Welcome to lesson five, example number one. <clears throat> Actually, I forgot to put some things on here. Well, we had 20 inches and we had 12 inches. And then these are two number tens. All right, and it's asking us, it says, yield strength is six PSI, which is typical of all which you might want to say, you know, you could do this, FY, but usually it's denoted as lower case FY. And that's the, you, the strength of your your reinforcing steel, which that's typical 60 KSI. And then uh, FYC equals 4,000, I and mean, that's pretty typical as well. This is kind of regular strength concrete. This is what you're going to see a lot. Sometimes 3,000 psi, but really, I don't. I don't think they make 3,000 psi anymore. Usually, if you you specify 3,000, they're just going to do 4,000. That's kind of the minimum F prime C that you do. And uh, concrete uh, stress. And it's asking, what is the moment capacity of the beam shown below? And there's the beam that's shown below. Assume that A equals and then we'll go ahead and see what actual A is and that the reinforcement ratio is less than 0.75% of the balanced design ratio <clears throat> alright so let's go ahead and start off here your your main thing we want to figure out is what is your area? well let's just go down and say some people say MU, they have it written MU. When I I usually call it MN, <laughs> and I call it VMN. Equals V A S F Y D minus A over two. And this is you must memorize this equation and right here because it's important. Actually, it's not VMN. Yeah, it is. Okay. And we have to go up here and say, what do we have? We know FY. It's 60 KSI. D, and then hopefully they explain this. This is equals to D. The distance from your extreme compression fiber, which we're going to say is this right here, to your centroid of your steel. And that's D. That's what equals D is. A. A is a little bit more confusing. Um, <clears throat> A. It's the depth of your compression block, which I would say go in and look at look at what they what they said on the the, uh, the study guide here, and you'll see that it's confusing. And I'll just do I'll go ahead and do some some videos on the theory behind what they're saying, but it actually. If you actually looked at this, this would, it would look like, you know, like this. But instead of doing this, a simplified version is that they're saying, it's more like this. Actually, there, it, it, it looks like that, and then your, your tension's right here. So they're saying this is T. So tension equals A area of your steel times your FY. <clears throat> and that's down there. And then this right here, this compression block, is this is an assumption. It's not perfect, but this is they've gone through and said, hey, this is what we're gonna do for simplicity's sake, and we'll call this your compression. And that equals 0 0.85. So 85% of F prime C, which is your strength times your AB. B, I'll go ahead and write it, equals that. And A is the depth of your compression block. And because it's not exactly that, because you can see this is actually coming out, they're, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're saying that this is equivalent to 0.85 that. And I know it's not it's something that it needs to be explained more in depth but as as i said before we this, i'm not going to explain it here i just tried to gloss over real quick what it what it is so 
in the end, memorize this equation. And it, it, it makes it a lot easier if you just have this. And this is one of those equations you have to remember. All right, and let's continue. And we know we need to find AS. We know D, which D is right there. We know B, but right now that's not doing any, any, that's any good because B is not in this equation. But we also have A. They gave us A. You actually need to know B to get A. And A, I don't know if they've had it on there. But A equals AS FY 0 0.85 F prime C times B. And this comes from that equation that I just wrote. Remember it was T equals AS FY. So you can see the top is T. And then C equals what 0 0.85 F prime C a, B, and you're just taking A and you're taking it out. So A is right there, and then you're dividing by what's left over, 0 0.85. And then you have ASFY, which is tension. So that's how you're getting it. <coughs> that's where that's deriving, derived from. And hopefully you follow that, but if not, that's how I just memorize what a, you know, phi in and A is. And they gave us it, but let's go ahead and calculate it real quick. So, well, we don't know area of steel. All right, let's go figure AS. So area of steel equals what? Well, it's 2 times the area of one number 10 bar. So we have 2. And if you go on page 87, it has the ASTM standard reinforcing bars. We go down to number 10, go over to nominal area, square inches, and it's 1.27 square inches. So you do this, 1.27 inches squared, and that's going to equal what? 2.54 inches squared. A little head math. 2.54 inches squared. And FY, I would always, you could just go in here and plug it in 2 times 1.27. I would, I would uh, figure out AS separately because you're going to need it again right here in Feynman equation so 60 KSI or 60,000 PSI I'm gonna do stuff in KSI I hope that doesn't bother you because that's what I'm used to and that's what you're gonna end up doing for KSI and then B B is 12 inches so let's go ahead and see what actual A is. 2.54 times 60 divided by 0.85 divided by 4 divided by 12 equals 3.7.74 inches. Which they said use 4. Okay, we're fine with that. All right, but let's, let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to zoom down a little bit here. And we said... Let's, let's calculate for phi m n. And remember this is capacity. Capacity equals phi, which is going to be 0 0.9, which I could go into where you get that. But when you're looking at beams, that's what it's always going to be. And then and you, go, you can get that in the ACI book, American Concrete. Institute, I think it's, it is. For some reason, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but that's all right. ACI book, 318, is where you'll get different things for shear. You, this, this fee has different values for shear and whatnot, but when you have this equation, it's always going to be 0.9. So AS equals what? 2.54 inches squared. FY equals 60 KSI. D equals, what do we say D is? 20 inches minus A, which we're assuming is 4 over 2. And then I'm just going to let you know you always do 1 over 12. And this is inches and foot. And that's always going to happen <coughs> when, you can, when you come in because you have... So let's go ahead and... And this is going to give us foot kips. 
So 0 0.9 times 2.54 times 60 times open parentheses 20 minus 4 divided by 2 close parentheses divided by 12 equals 205.7. And that's going to be foot kips. That's what we usually deal with. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and look and check and see if that's what they were asking for. I believe it was. And it said, what is the moment capacity of the beam shown below? And that's what we have. We have the moment capacity. And let's check it. And they say, they use MU. And usually I use MU. It's what I've always done. So I don't know if they messed up or is it something, a difference in what they do compared to what I have done in the past and usually do. But usually I use MU is your ultimate moment. Um, which means this is more your load. It's your load. So, And then you'll see going forward that usually, you know, MU, you can have, you could say MS, is your service load that means unfactored service moment and then mu is your factored so this is this means mu is typically what i is i did know that when it's factored and once again this is why engineering gets really confusing because i don't know if it's a mistake but they're calling mu for capacity which i would not do that i would use this vmn or MN. And then MS is the service moment. And then when you factor it, you'll have, you know, 1.4 dead plus 1.7 live load or, or whatnot to get your ultimate moment. All right. So that is your answer. 2.5. This is your moment that it can handle. So you need the MU to be lower than that. And then when you put together your load. All right. Hopes this helps. I will see you on the next example.